Eating gold is like the equivalent of wiping your butt with dollar bills. At some point, it's just gonna come in contact with my ass. I'm just doing it in a kind of more elegant way. Right? So we're in New York right now. We're still in New York because we had an ice cream this morning. I need to stop having dessert for breakfast. Yeah, it's kind of a problem, but that's okay. We're gonna fill this little belly up with pizza. So today and tomorrow, we are gonna be trying three drastically different New York pizza places at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its given price point. Actually, we do have a special guest who might be one of the best people. Foreshadowing. Before our previous worth it episode together on pizza, I'd get the works, but I learned that pizza is really about the crust. You look like a the works kind of guy. If you are on the Jersey Shore, your nickname would be the works. Your hair, it's got the works. My jacket, it's got the works. You give people the works. To clarify that for my girlfriend, I do not give anybody the works. First place we're going to is a nice little shop in the village called Joe's Pizza. I fucking love pizza. It's the best food in the best place. With the best people. Hi, my name is Alex, and we are here at Joe's Pizza in the Greenwich Village. I've been working here for more than 25 years. Wow. But the place has been here since 1975. We never change the recipe. You guys are the best, right? Yeah, <laughs> of, course. of course. Whoever wants to buy a nice, well-done cheese slice, they come here. We know some tourists, they come like 20 years ago, and they still come around. Them and their families and their friends. Some people eat it pizza every day. Oh, yeah, every yeah. Day. The lady, every day. She walked from Midtown to here, buy two slices and go home. Three years, every night. The beginning of the pizza is in the kitchen because I make the dough. So you put flour to make it easy to work and then I stretch it. Try to stretch it even, not too big, not too small. You gotta be gentle, right? I'm not gentle. All right. I'm hard with the dough. This dough is okay, but it's too cold. So when it's too cold, it's kind of hard to stretch it. It all depends on the, the weather. Summertime is gonna rise. Yeah. Maybe in an hour and a half. Every pizza is different. I could make thousands of pies, it's gonna be thousands of times different. And then the sauce is only one scoop. One scoop. If you put more, it's gonna be too saucy. I have to be careful with the amount of sauce. It has to be spread and nice and even. I grab the cheese and I put it and I see it. I always just try to put the same spot so many years. I know already how it's gonna come out. The oven itself has to do with the flavor. There's a 40 years old oven working every night. You never shut it off. How do you know the pizza's finished baking? The way I like it is golden. In the bottom and around and the cheese. Do you eat pizza every day? No, every day, at least once a week. You say once a week? No. Yeah. <laughs> at least two slices a day. I know. Let's <laughs> we'll eat some of that everlasting immortal pizza. We've done a lot of awesome food before. We have. This is probably the most exciting I've ever been. Not only is pizza my favorite food, but this is my favorite incarnation of pizza. It's just this slice no drip. right now. So thin. It's got that crunch. Can I eat this already? Boom. I could crush like 10 of these right now. It has a satisfying chew, but it still makes a sound in every part of it that you bite into. You're getting that crunch. It's not a pile of grease. No grease to speak It's out. actually kind of light for a pizza. There's just enough burnt bits where you have a slight bitter taste and then the sweet sauce cancels that out. It's just perfect. <sighs> it's what you hope every piece of pizza is gonna taste like. So good. This is unquestionably New York style pizza. You don't even have to be hungry to want Joe's pizza. It's a treat pizza. I think I'm gonna have this pizza for dessert after every next pizza place we go to. What do you think about that? I think I want more pizza. You wanna hook us up two more? This is the kind of pizza you would eat alone. That's when you know the food is good, when you come for the food, not for the company. Tell me about it. You want some pizza, Adam? Give me that pizza back. Can it get better than this, though? I think pizza gets different than this. It just, like, what's an analogy? F analogies. It's perfect. What did you think of Joe's pizza? It's just the, the cartoon. It's what the Ninja Turtles would eat. It didn't look perfect before he made it. Turning imperfect to perfect, very hard to do. He could sense differences in the pizza that I don't think I could ever sense. It's raining outside, so the dough is a little more humid. The moon is full, so it rises a little higher. It's just like the sunset. Yes. This one's a little different, but it still makes the world go round. I think we can get the whole train to say pizza fact at the same time. 
No, and I'm not gonna yell because we're in a public space. Pizza bag. There is a 3D printer that prints pizza. NASA wanted to print pizzas for astronauts to eat in space. We already have a 3D pizza printer. His name is Alex at Joe's. <laughs> you ready for this next place? I'm scared. We're about to eat a pizza made by the Mario Batali. The Italian. In season one, we actually ate at a restaurant that Mario Batali helped start. And now we're gonna have him make lunch for us. Is yeah. that weird? Hey fellas, my name's Mario Batali. I wear short pants for a living, <laughs> and I'm making pizza. We are at Italy Flatiron, and this is a restaurant called Rosso Pomodoro. Italy is an experiential grocery store. Our message is you shouldn't go out to dinner. Fundamentally, the store is about buying stuff here and making it yourself. Can you buy everything here you need to make this pizza? Everything that you eat, you can buy in this store. And we will give you the recipe. This is Neapolitan pizza. The fundamental story behind both pizza and pasta is that the noodle or the crust is the dish. Everything else that's on it is merely a condiment. You would never get a works pizza in Italy. So you make the dough. This is a dough that is quite delicate, so it's not one that you throw. The idea is to stretch it consistently so that it's nice and thin about this big around. Then we dress it with just a little bit of tomato sauce, which is crushed San Marzano's. That's it. A little bit of herbs, a little oregano, a little extra virgin olive oil into the oven. That's it. When it gets a little brown on the left side where the heat source is, you just give it a little spin. Comes out. I sprinkle it with a couple more oregano leaves. That's the pie. I made a calzone in case you got hungry. Oh! It's pretty good. Are we gonna eat? Do we sit down and eat? I would love to. Can we do that? Yeah, f yeah. Marinara pizza. There's no cheese here. No. Right? This is where you truly understand the magnificence of the bread being the story, the sauce being the condiment, and go ahead, try. Yeah. Cheers. 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 I noticed that you ate it from the back. Well, I always want to yeah. check to make sure the crust is in the right spot. Oh, okay. And it is. Yeah, it's in my mouth. That's the right spot. <laughs> the crust is just my favorite part. That's what I want. It's just that dough. I can't believe this is just crushed tomatoes. Why am I eating tomatoes with anything else in it? That's a question I often ask other people. I know that people are going to look at this pizza and say, it's burnt. What do you think Who about that? Who the is going to say that? Some guy on the internet is going to say that is going to look at that and say it's burnt. But isn't that important? Isn't it that is crucial. It? It the burnt is. piece. We're not hiding this. There was a char to our base. But when you eat yeah. that, that bitterness is measured out against the song of the tomato sauce, right? Like, that better makes sense, doesn't it? When I'm at Korean barbecue and you got those burnt pieces still left in the grill, that's my jam. Right. The Italian bite needs to have a whimsy and caprice to it because they like one bite to be woo and one bite to be mm. Now try this. Calzone, it's classically filled only with ricotta and prosciutto cotto, which is the cooked ham, not prosciutto di parma. Oh dear God. That's succulent the way that a jelly-filled donut is. Well said. It's like if I took a bite of a pig that was still moving, and it had submitted to your carnal desires. Yeah. That's what it should taste like. I feel weird saying that, but... That's why I said it. <laughs> There's good pizza in this town. Do you know Joe's? Like the best slice in New York? Yes. yes. Joe's on Father Demo Square. Yeah, we were there last night. That is a New York slice. There is almost nothing better. Neither should be excluded from the party. Someone's got to do an investigation to what goes into these cans of tomatoes. Why don't we take your show on the road? I'll take you to Naples. I would do that. There's a rich sweetness to almost everything that grows there. It's due to that volcanic kind of soil that they have. There's something poetic about tomatoes grown in the soil where a volcano erupted yes. being sweeter to complement the chariness. the chariness on a pizza we're eating today. I think we both just got put to shame. <laughs> I'm just a little thirstier. You know what? I work all day long. This style of pizza, what was its purpose? Not necessarily a meal. It was probably even considered maybe a side dish or just the bread. Tomato sauce came from the New World. So 1600s would have been the first time you saw a real pizza. So pizza sauce comes from the New World. Tomatoes were from America, not from Italy. You gotta be kidding me. No, you just love food. I love everything about it. The story, the practice, the production. When I became a cook in 1978, anybody could peel potatoes for soup. In the ensuing 30 to 40 years, food transcended merely fuel and meals. You guys are eating thousand dollar cakes. The world has changed. Well, this was one of the best experiences Thank for you. us. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thanks for having me. There's the allegedly burnt piece for the angry guy on the internet. There's a char. Oh man. Okay, Adam. Adam just committed to a big bite. You're gonna have to give him a second here.
So we just ate at Italy. At their pizzeria, which I think is called Pomodoro Rosso. It means red tomato. Look at me. I'm practically a Batali. A Batali or Italian? I'm a Batalian. Whoa. Whoa. I can't believe how good that pizza tasted. He made cooking look so simple and so easy. I'm ready for a no cheese pizza fact. Pizza fact. Naples actually has the world record for the longest pizza ever. Longest? Yes. Guess how long it was. Is it still a circle? Give me a number. 20 feet. Did I nail it? 6,000 feet. <laughs> That's over a mile. Did they cook it over a volcano? Volcanoes <laughs> aren't even that big. We're going to the final pizza. You ready for this pizza? 2,000 big ones. 6,000 foot pizza, $2,000 pizza. <laughs> this is all a joke, right? No, we're actually gonna eat a $2,000 pizza. Do we have uh, the money for that? My name is Rory Bunai. I'm executive chef of Industria Kitchen. Today we're gonna to eat this $2,000 pizza. Does it have a name? 24K. The 24K pizza? Yeah, come with an idea because when I walk down Broadway, I see big, big jewelry store. This is the Broadway jewelry store on a plate. Yes. So you just wanted to find the best ingredient regardless of the cost. Yeah, exactly. Our priority is to be different than everywhere in your city. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch the, the pizza dough, the dough, the squid ink. Then we're gonna put the foie gras, Stilton cheese from England. After that, we're gonna put winter black truffle from France. And then 24 cargo from Ecuador. We use strips, also uh, sprinkles. Then bake in the oven, seven to 10 minutes. Then boom outside with those central caviar from Caspian Sea. Do you think you're ever gonna make a pizza that's better than this one? I don't think so. <laughs> diamonds not next? You cannot eat diamonds. You cannot eat diamonds. Watch me try. I got a strong stomach. No, I don't, can, I, I don't. You, you can die. Say it as it is, it's kind of crazy. Yes, it's a gold it pizza. Is. We're gonna eat a couple hundred dollars worth of gold. Let's see if it works or not. So we got here the 24K. It's the gold season. Got to do this thing. Look at you, learning. And it's the thing I do with real people I eat with, too. Am I not a real person? Friends, family. We're not there yet? I feel like I'm we're family more than friends, you know? I'm not sure if it's our purpose to be there. That's the richest i felt, watching that gold shaker just like. I feel like that would be your stripper alter ego, gold shaker, the richest you'll ever feel. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Select a slice. I want this one. Oh. Ooh, look at that cross section. Whoa. Whoa. It's like a $30 bite right there. I wasn't like super confident. I knew what Stilton tasted like, but it's actually really creamy and smooth and is a nice kind of backdrop for the caviar and the foie gras. At the end of the day, it's still pizza, right? You eat it. I'm honestly speechless. You never get used to eating gold. Oh, man. I can't waste the gold. Gold finger. We've had foie gras now. We've had the caviar taco. Now it's just all coming together. That's a fun way to think of it. I got gold on my lips. Yeah. This is a pizza you gotta share, though. I feel weird. Is it the gold? I just ate $250. This pizza, I would one slice, in my mouth. Too fitty. What this pizza is doing for me is it's fulfilling one of my greatest fantasies. Always been a huge fan of James Bond. As I grew up, I realized I am a little bit more of a Bond villain. And eating this pizza, I feel like a Bond villain. I want to eat this in my volcano layer. James Bond is locked up. He probably escaped already because I never do it right. You are right though. I feel, I feel kind of like, like I'm committing a crime. I think that's the greatest gift you've ever given me. Can we be uh, villains together? You'd be more like my henchman. Fine with me. Here's what I think we should do. Bring it back to BuzzFeed New York headquarters, sharing the wealth. How many times in your life have you gotten a slice of pizza that you didn't know you were gonna get? Have a slice, I'm not gonna eat it all anyway. That's kind of like the spirit of pizza. We poop gold later. Let's go box this up for some more people. Oh man. Whoa. And that's what $1,250 looks like in a cardboard box. Pizza? <laughs> no, I don't like it at all. <laughs> no, I really don't like it. Don't need a drink. 
This has been possibly my favorite episode so far. The Neapolitan from Italy, which is the perfect representation of what pizza originally was. And you have Joe's, which is the perfect American slice. What was the most worth it for me? Probably the Joe's slice. What? It was the most pizza that pizza has ever been. So let me break it down for you. Industry Kitchen Pizza, $2,000. All of the ingredients together, I think I would prefer personally to eat them individually. Mario Batali's Pizza. A meal is best enjoyed with friends. And we got a new friend today. My worth of winner goes to Italy. I struggle to digest cheese. Oh, wait so a second. You're just lactose intolerant. I obviously... You just pick the one that's not going to make you fart. He inspired me to change my life and start cooking more. Really? Yeah. Mario, send him a book. He needs a lot of help. Adam, who's your worth it winner? You know what I really want though? Dessert pizza. It's for the Joes. If I was blindfolded and had a cheese slice in this slice. Oh, you'd know. Milk is your first primary response. Your lactic sensors would fire like a baby sucking on the teeth. Oh, yes.